so these principles of design are what guide us in doing that. They guide us in bringing those parts together into a whole. So unity. Unity is our first guiding principle. We want the things that we are bringing together to look like they belong together. And there may be a reason why something looks like it doesn't belong, and that would be emphasis, and we'll talk about that next. But in general, unity is what helps us make those things look like they belong together. The way that we accomplish this, there are some sub principles to this principle of unity. We accomplish it by, by using these things or, or by, by using our, our tools, our elements in these ways, okay? So proximity would be the first one. What does proximity mean? Does anybody know? Yes, Eli, the opposite of chaos would be design. Proximity, closeness, Nathan says. If something is in proximity with something else, it's either next to it or it's close enough to it that we realize that it belongs with it. Which of these four do you, can you recognize, in which of these four, can you recognize proximity? And this is going to be hard because we haven't really even talked much about it at all. But just the objects being close to one another, showing that they belong together. Which do you think? Nathan thinks the bottom left, okay? James says the top right. Okay, bottom left too. Bottom left, says Eli. Okay. You're right. These do exhibit proximity. But if we are using proximity by itself, and we just want to group things together to show that they belong together, yes, Audrey, the top left is showing us only by proximity. You see how these things, they're, they're actually the same shape. So this, this uses repetition too. And one of the things that you will see is that you, you don't have to just do it one way. You don't have to just use one principle to guide you, that they're overlapping. And you will strengthen your design when you use more than one means of composing. So in this top left square, we see that the, the, the little squares, I guess it's a, maybe a rectangle, the little squares are grouped together. And we know in this composition that this is a group of squares and this is a group of squares. And only because they are put in proximity with each other. They are put close to each other. We don't think about this square right here needing to have anything to do with this square right here because they're in separate groups, because their proximity is not um, given to each other. This square has proximity with these squares, and this square has proximity with these squares. Okay? All right, what about repetition. And again, you're going to find it in more than one place because these have proximity as well. These have proximity as well, but it's, it's just this composition right here that is only using proximity to put those shapes together in a group. Where do we see repetition? Where do you see repetition? You can't get this one wrong. Nathan sees it in the bottom right. Okay, small circles repeated, big circles repeated, small circles repeated. James sees it in the bottom right. Eli sees it in the bottom right. Audrey sees it in the top right. Circles repeated, squares repeated. It's here. We've got rectangles repeated here. They're not all the same size, but it's the shape. It's the same shape. And we've got squares repeated here. Repetition is used in each one of these examples to bring unity to the composition. So 
imagine if in this composition over here, these shapes were all different shapes. We didn't see, we didn't see the, the squares running vertically and horizontally through the middle. We just all different shapes. It would be a different kind of composition, wouldn't it? They're still lined up and they have a, they have unity because of the next, uh, the, the next aspect we'll talk about, grid. But the repetition makes that unity stronger, doesn't it? And over here as well, we might not see the proximity of these groups as clearly if they weren't all squares, if they were all different kinds of shapes. And over here, we would definitely read this, maybe not as lines, we, we read this in a linear way because of the way the circles are aligned. So repetition brings unity in some way to each one of these compositions. What about grid? That's easy, right? Where do you see the grid? Eli sees it in the top right. Nathan sees it in the top right. James sees it in the top right. Yes, that one is sort of obvious. It's a grid. And that just means that there are vertical and horizontal rows and the objects in your composition are fit within those rows. Now a grid does not need to be this static. It can just be alignment in a vertical and horizontal manner. But this is uh, just a really clear example of using a grid. Now continuation. This is a little bit harder to kind of grasp, but think of continuation as being an invisible line. So where in these compositions do you see continuation? Where do you see an invisible line flowing through the composition? Eli, did you, or Nathan, did you say bottom left? Eli and Nathan see bottom left. Okay, you're right. There's more than one answer though. Who else sees it? Audrey sees it in the bottom right, for sure. Those circles are creating a line. James sees it in the bottom right. Do you see how they're doing it differently? Where the line is the object here, and here the line is the space. Positive, negative, you know all about that now, right? There is continuation even here in the grid. A continuation is sort of inherent in a grid because things are lined up. So it's not, it's not necessarily as strong there. Continuation is even present in these groups with proximity. Can you see how they're kind of formed in a, a, a more or less linear falling kind of pattern? If you can follow from one object to the next with your eye, and your eye is led on a linear path through the composition, you guys need to be writing this stuff down. That is continuation. So if your eye kind of starts here, because this is a big black square, it's like a focal point, right? And then you've got an edge that kind of leads you to another square, and then the point that leads you to another square, and a point, another point, and then maybe you kind of are led through the negative space of these squares. If you are kind of led on this route through this, um, it, it, it's a linear composition here, even though it's sort of a group, then that's continuation. Continuation is your eye continuing from one edge or space or shape or point to another in the composition. It's how you use the objects to lead the viewer's eye through the composition. All right, so what do we see here? Now, I'm going to turn on the tools and you guys can volunteer and you can each have a turn to tell me something that you see about unity in this composition. James, did you draw the black line? Okay, what would you call that? What's that an example of?
You could turn on your mic if you'd like. Okay. Sort of a grid, the way that things are lined up. Okay. I would agree with that. What else? What else do you see? It's hard for me to not give it all away. Who else would like to have a shot at it? Continuation. Yes, Audrey. Audrey, would you like to draw on our screen where you see that continuation? Show us that beautiful flowing line. Okay. That's right. So can you, yes, can you keep going? Where else does it lead your eye? And again, there, is, there was an intention from the artist, but it may work differently from, for each viewer. That's one of the beautiful things about art. And so there may not be a wrong answer. There are, there are definitely some things that were intended, though, that we can talk about. Right, right. And look here. Look at that big, bright object down in a dark corner that really grabs our attention. So if we start there and we go here and then we come up and around here, we can basically, the artist can move our eye around the entire composition. We can also have a smaller kind of um, curve that works through and kind of through the, the center portion as well and connects our eye. Okay, let me clear that so someone else can. What else do we see? Any of the other aspects of unity? What do you see in the shapes? You see Okay, and they are, which, where, which is the word? Repetition, that's right, that's it. Okay, good. So you can see a few of those um, aspects of unity and how those are working in this composition, right? Okay, very good. Um, in the interest of time, I'm going to skip this one and just point out to you how, well, okay, first of all, what, what is used? Does this, does this first one, does this first one look like a composition? Does it look like it's, I mean, maybe there's one thing put in each corner. Which one looks better? Let's put it that way. The right one looks better. Why? What has been done with those shapes to make that composition look better? They've been put close together. What's the word for that? Proximity, exactly. So this is how we use proximity to bring those objects into a relationship to create the composition. Okay, and okay, just very quickly, what do we see here that's creating unity? Repetition, very strong repetition. What else? Can you find that your eye starts somewhere? Continuation, Eli, that's right. Your eye starts somewhere and it's able to kind of follow through the composition from one shape to the next using both the positive and the negative edges. I just love this and I, I, I just have to kind of, I, for me, I start right here and you can kind of, you know, have this waterfall effect as it comes through or you can, um, you, your, or your eye will work through the positive shape, which are really strong because the contrast is so high. So you will kind of work your way in this direction. Okay, 
Let's keep going. And what do we see here in this one? And this is where it gets a little bit looser and is not as tight as the first example that we saw. A grid, that's right, Eli. There's a grid that is used here to compose these images. 